All right, so what is up, YouTube? Tamari G is here with some Duel Links, which I haven't done in forever. Uh, I don't think I actually have done it on the channel. I don't remember. But here I have Bandit Keith, a deck with him. If my game will ever load, it's very laggy. Uh, I also unlocked Arcana from the event that was going on. I also unlocked Mokuba from the event that was going on. Whew. I don't know why I'm, like, jittery right now. I, I'm probably it's because I'm sleepy. I have all these characters. My highest level is Yugi at level 20 what? 21. Whereas everyone else is like 10, low 10s. Uh, I think Joey is one of my highest as well. 15? Yeah, because uh, Joey Wheeler. The best duelist around. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, there's Taya. My... God, my game is super duper laggy. And then Mako's brand new. So, the the reason why I'm recording this, if it'll ever load, God, the lag is real. Hold up, hold up. God, the lag with Duel Links is real. Whoa. Okay, I don't know what is up. Yeah, it's just with Duel Links, man. Duel Links the lag is real with this screen recorder. Or the built-in. Nvidia Shield screen recorder. Um, I just want to show off some replays. I have hit gold now. I actually started off in, I think it was the new rank with this deck, so it's climbed all the way to gold. I've been losing some battles recently, but I mean, what, what can you do? Uh, a couple of them were chokes, so that always sucks. But here's a couple games I have saved, so I want to show them off. So let's start off with the Paradox Brothers one. I don't remember these replays, so these are going to be fun to look at as well. And see if I made some misplays. That's what I love about looking back on replays. You know, you know, I made a misplay here and there. I'll fix it eventually. The Paradox Brothers. Para and Dox. So we're going first here. We're playing as Joey this time around. Alright, so originally I was testing it out as Joey, and then I kind of just preferred the um, Bandit Keith version. It's Field of Warriors, which allows you to boost your... Uh, Oh my god, look at that lag, is horrible. Okay, so this is a brick hand. You usually don't want a hand like this with a bunch of spells, because usually it means you're going to brick. And the term brick basically means you can't do crap <laughs> with your hand. And you're usually just, you know, stuck trying to do stuff, but you probably can't. So, like, I believe... It, god, this lag is really pissing me off. Fusion Sage. Add a polymerization from your deck to your hand. He gets a poly. Okay. Okay. Look at this. Look at this. Sets a card. Okay. Uh huh. And that's it. That's it. That's all he does. Alright. So I draw. I believe we draw into a spell or a trap. Yep. We draw into a spell. And we can't shuffle any of the cards in our hands because Gladiator Beast for Spies says they have to have Gladiator Beast in the moon. So at this point, I'm like, oh great, that's amazing. Oh my god, crap. And he attacks for 14! He ends his turn. Let's see if we can draw Glad. And we draw into a penetrable attack, and I'm like, whoop, it stalls the turn. Uh, we still lose, but we stall the turn. And then it's just like, man, I don't think we're gonna win this. Uh, battle 14, pings me for 14, dropping me to 12. And I believe he, I believe he activates Cannon Soldier? Or no, no, no. It's not until later where he activates Cannon Soldier's effect, which allows him to destroy a monster on their side of the field, allowing it to ping for 500 at my life points. Which is really annoying in the game, especially when you only have 4,000 to start off. Don't know what that is. Oh wait, I, I got in a few of those. I set a monster, I believe. What is it like? Once per turn, during the, the player's end phase, change the battle position of all face-up monsters your opponent controls. So he draws into this monster, Giga Tech Wolf. He gives 
The piercing damage to cannon soldier, which allows him to basically 500 directly. At this point, I'm like, yeah, I lost. Uh, there was only one way to stall out the turn. And I believe I. Oh no, he just sacks himself, does drop me to 200 just to, just to rub it in my face. End phase, Labyrinth of Nightmare. And ends his turn. Kind of made me sad. I was like, I was hoping he'd attack, piercing, so, or with the non-piercing one, so that way I could activate an uh, impenetrable attack, and then my Milo would chuff when I get a new one. But no, no. All I got to do was equip this, and then attack. Attack for 11, effect, shuffle, special, I believe it was a special, a, a Larku, a Lark, a Lark, a Lark, who's, I don't know his name. Nope, I summon BCR and destroy the trap, right? Right, the trap, yeah, the trap. And then the equip spell allows it to add it back to my hand. I believe I do lose this one. Because I don't see how we could win. I honestly don't. Take a monster and then just turn. I mean, even if we could win, if he doesn't draw anything good. Uh, but I don't think we actually win this one. Okay, so Gladiator Beast for Spite, for spite allows us to shuffle two Gladiator Beast cards from our hand into our deck and then draw three cards. So we draw one, two, three. I believe I go, uh, the Buffalo. No, I go Mermillo. Oh, yeah. I go Mermillo so I can shuffle the Mermillo back into the... I don't? What? Why wouldn't I go Mer... Oh. I do chip damage and then I get a shuffle back into the deck. So 900 dropping them to 2k. We drop into 2k, both their effects activate. So allowing you to shuffle that. Special summon what? The tiger? Larkus? Yeah, Larkus. Larkquarry. 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 Let's go. Let's just go with the tiger. So we got tiger, or, um, tiger horn. I like that. And then Octavius, which I got rid of. I don't have him in the current build of the deck, but... This is why I don't have them. Because <laughs> if you forget, you end up having to pop your own face down, which is dumb. Stupid. Well, so stupid to figure out. And then he just came in soldiers in that game right there. <laughs> you know, we were making a comeback. If he hadn't have gotten that cannon soldier, if he had it in his hand the whole game, you know, that, that was just him making fun of me. But, um... You know, we maybe could have won that. If he would have just set a monster, we would have swung and swung for game. So, yeah. That nah, was kind of sad, but yeah, let's go up against this Yami Bakura one. This one was played on the 7th at 11.55 p.m. Let's check it out. This was when I was still in silver, if I'm correct. Unless I was in gold. I think I was still in silver. It depends. We'll see. I think I was still in silver. Yeah, I was still in silver, I think. Step right up to get I'm pretty sure we were still in silver. So, here's what we did. I went ahead and activated with Spies to shuffle in Augustus and Mermilla. Uh, I'll explain all their effects when I get into the deck. I think I'm just going to do this, this replay, and then if you guys want to see the other two replays, I'll show them to you guys. Um, so, I summoned Dimakari. Then activate the equip spell. The equip spell gives me 300 attack, and I believe I just end my turn there just to be safe. Um, this was just to intimidate him. You know, get him all scared. Be like, hey, you better be careful, or I, I will smack you for 19. Which ends up backfiring because he gets D spell, which pops my equip spell. And then he's got an 18 beater, which his effect is when he inflicts piercing damage, for me, uh, forces me to draw two cards from my deck. Which kind of helped me, because it gave me another glad to go ahead and shuffle back into the deck, but I was going to draw one anyways. So, but 
I mean, hey, having two other options still in my hand is great. I believe, yeah, I shuffle those two into the deck because I'd rather have Dimakaris in my hand than those guys. I go uh, and all, I believe. Yes, I go and all and all. 1900, 100, just enough to smack that thing out of the board. Um, and Darl's kind of like the odd man out because he doesn't get his effect at the end of the turn. He's just a plain 1900 beater. This really annoyed me. Teeter of death, or defeat. It forces me to mill one card from the top of my deck, which is really annoying. Which is why I want to get Yami Bakura, to be honest. Uh, he gets that, and then he gets his Peking Goblin, which allows him to look at my top three cards, I believe. One, two, three. And he can put one on the bottom. He selected... Uh, Gladiator Beast Augustus, it goes on the bottom, and then Beast DR goes on top, and then that is my impenetrable attack. He swings, I take 400. Effect of the baby, the vampire koala, he gains 400, putting him at 4,300. Draw. Set, Dimakari, and then in turn, he draws. He mills my impenetrable attack, which I thought was my only way out, because impenetrable attack would have given me the effect uh, cannot be destroyed by battle. Draw. Respite. Gladiator to Beast Respite. No or er, shuffle in my mill on Beast Diari. Because I need their effect. Plus I need more cards in the deck. Activate. Gladiator Beast Arena. Normal summon. Dimakari. Dimakari attack. Petit pet 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 petin. Petin? Petin? The Dark Clown guy, who allows him to special summon another Dark Clown. Affected Dimakari, since he also special summoned my thing, uh, Gladiator Beast Arena, gets a one, it gets a counter on it, and for every counter, a Gladiator Beast gains 100 attack. Um, and that's whenever any monster special summoned from the deck to the field. And then Mermillo comes out and just pops the Koala and gets him off the board. Knows my top card. There goes my third Dimakari. Normal oh, summon. Buckwheeze. Buckwheeze. Destroys. Petten Clown. Giving my Mermillo another one, one, another 100 attack. Just 100 away from being able to kill the pit. Er, crash. But I wouldn't have been able to crash to this in defense. But whatever. Uh, special summon Augustus. Augustus' effect allows me to special summon Mermillo from my hand. Mermillo's effect, since he was special summoned by the effect of a gladiator beast, pop the penitent, clown, and shuffle back into my deck. Making my hand just a little smaller, and just small enough so that I don't get milled out in a couple turns. Draw for turn. I draw Mermillo, of course. Why wouldn't I draw Mermillo? Shuffle both Mermillos, get my fusion monster out on the board. My 2900 UD. Effective man eater bug. Pop Augustus. Which would have smacked him for 3k. In his turn, he draws. I'm at 3400. He gets card trader off. And that's the end of his turn. So then, draw. Normal summon. 1500 attacker. Which becomes 1900 because of the field spell. And then 29 to the face. And Curry Bug gets activated. Making him do nothing. Effect of BCR, you shuffle into the deck. Special summon. I would have loved to have, a, have had Octavius, so I could have popped that face down, but nope. I had to go for the Larkwees or Larquari. And he's gonna shuffle in with Card Trader, his last card in his hand. And ends his turn. Doesn't seem to be anything he could use. Effect of the Gladiator's return. Shuffle Augustus. Latest. Ends in Makari back into the deck. Draw a card. Putting me back at six cards in the deck. So now I'm summoning Bestiari. Attack of Bestiari. And then 3k for the W. Business challenging a champ like me. And that's what you get for trying to mill me out. Because I don't mill out that easy. Alright? Especially with this glad deck. This glad deck is full of monsters. So let's go to the profile. The deck profile. So I believe, yep, this is the Gladiator Beast deck that I've been using that's climbing up to gold. It's good for beginners, it's pretty budget, uh, except for the two super rare, three super rares. Alright, so the recording cut because I had stuff going on, but you can swap some stuff for another impenetrable attack. Uh, impenetrable attack, during the battle phase, activate one of these effects. 
target monster on the field cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effect during the battle phase. Or you take no damage during the battle phase. Uh, during this battle phase. So, the reason why you want this card because of its first effect. Uh, it makes it so that the creature cannot be destroyed with battle. So if they attack, knowing that your face down is weak, like let's say a Mermillo face down, they attack your Mermillo, your Mermillo's effect activates his last part. Uh, right here. At the end of your battle of the battle phase, if this card was attacked or, or if this card attacked or was attacked, you can shuffle this card into the deck, especially someone Gladiator Beast from your deck. Except for Gladiator Beast Mermillo. His effect one he special summon is if you special summon by the effect of a gladiator beast, target a face up monster, destroy that target, and that's what he does. So that's why we're running two. We don't need three, mainly just because uh, two gets the job done. Two, you draw it more than enough. You don't need to draw it, you just need to keep it in the deck. You need to keep one in the deck at least. It's fine to have one in your hand, but you want to keep one in the deck. The reason why it's fine to have one in your hand is because of this guy, Augustus, who basically. When he special summoned by the effect of a gladiator beast, he special summoned another gladiator beast from your hand in defense position, and then as soon as he special er, during the end phase of that monster being special summoned, it gets shuffled back into the deck. So I can special summon Mermillo, and since it's all happening during the end phase, shuffle him back into the deck, get, and then Mermillo just stays in the deck. And then when he attacks or was attacked, he gets to shuffle into the deck to get another gladiator beast. These are all optional effects, by the way. You don't have to do them. So yeah. Uh, Bestiari, one of my favorite gladiator beasts, just because, one, the look, two, because of his effect. When especially summoned by the effect of a gladiator beast target, spell on the field, destroy that target. At the end of the battle phase, if this card was attacked or is attacked, you special summon gladiator beast. Yada yada yada. That's what all the gladiator beasts do. They can shuffle back into the deck and uh, special summon another gladiator beast, except for Andal. Andal can be special summoned, but he cannot special summon another monster, so cool. So yeah. And then we got Alexander, who can only be special summoned by Dimakari. Uh, that's the fun part about his effect. He can only be special summoned by Dimakari, but when he is, boy, is he one strong creature because he cannot be affected by spells. And he does the same thing. He has shuffled back into the deck, but he can be affected by spells. So no econs are happening to him. Simple. Test tape. Test tape is just if he's destroyed by battle, special summon level 4 or lower gladiator beast from your deck. Which we have more than enough of. We only have two that are higher than level 4 in the deck, and that's Augustus and Alexander. And then last but not least, we have Laquari. Laquari is a level 4 when he's special summoned by the effect of a gladiator beast. Its original attack becomes 2100. So Larquiz's original attack becomes 2100. And at the end of the battle phase, if he attacked or was attacked, you just shuffle him into the deck, special summon another gladiator beast, so forth. Except for Laquari. You can't special summon themselves, so if you have a Dimakari, Dimakari can't be shuffled in for a Dimakari. Just a rule, really. Um, but yeah. One tip about the uh, Mermillo and BCR. Be careful when you're specialing them onto the board, because if you have another creature and Mermillo special summon, but your opponent doesn't have any creatures, you have to pop one of your own creatures. There's no ways around it. Same with BCR. If they have no spells or traps, you're going to pop one of your own if you special them. So just be on the lookout for that. You don't have to shuffle, but it's just fun to do. Um, oh, let me go over to Respite. Respite allows you to shuffle in two Gladiator Beast cards from your hand to the deck and draw three. So it basically thins out your deck, allows you to draw more of the big guys and special summon them and just start beating things, essentially. So yeah, and with this card, you can get rid of uh, certain gladi glads that you don't want to have in your hand. And then we have Cage of the Gladiators, Gladiator Beast Coliseum. Place a one one. Place a counter. God, I'm so used to magic. Place a counter on this card each time a monster is special summoned from either player's deck. All gladiator beast monsters gain 100 attack and defense for each of these counters on this card. If this card would be destroyed by a card effect, you discard one Colosseum Cage of the Gladiator to prevent it from being destroyed. You could run two. I only run one because you only really need one. Uh, no one really pops the fields that often, and though if they pop this one, it really doesn't matter because your monsters either way can get stronger by fusioning, which I'll show you guys in a bit. If I haven't showed you guys this already, this Gladiator Beast Battle Gladius. Equipped to a Gladiator Beast monster, it gains 300 attack. When the equipped monster is returned from your side of the field to the deck, you can send this card from your graveyard and return to your hand. So if it's in the grave, or let's say it's equipped to Dimakari, and I attack with Dimakari. Dimakari lives, Dimakari gets shuffled back into the deck. Uh, normally it would go to the grave, but it would go to the grave, you would special summon your Gladiator, and then you'd get the spell back to your hand. So anyway. And then Penetrable Attack, I already explained. 20 card deck. And now for the fives. Now you don't need to run you don't you don't need to run three of these guys. I just run three because they're the only ones I really have. Um 
two or one is fine. Uh, the one you probably want to run the most is this guy, but let's go to this one real quick. So, shuffle, um, must be special summoned from the extra deck. By shuffling in the above cards, you control into the deck. Do not use polymerization. Shuffle in two gladiator beasts. You just need two. It can be on doll, it can be any. You just, you just need two. That's all you need. And then we have Necrosio. Or ne necro ne Nero. He I don't know how to pronounce him. I'm just going to call him the Big Fat Bat. Big Fat Bat needs three Gladiator Beast monsters shuffled into the deck. Same as the other one. To special summon him. And then cannot be destroyed with battle. If this card is attacked or is attacked, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step. At the end of the battle phase, if this card attacked or was attacked, you can shuffle it into the extra deck special summon two Gladiator Beast from your deck. This guy is a giant nuke. If you drop him, your opponent's going to be in trouble. He's a 2800. He can smack pretty much anything. Uh, he almost rivals Blue Eyes. But if you have a Respise, if you have a Gladius and the Field Spell, you're definitely, definitely already going to have enough stuff to be able to rival Blue Eyes easily. So then we have the last one, which is the Ultra Rare. Gladiator Beast, Hurricillos. He's the only Ultra Rare in the deck. Um... Really don't even have to run him. I hardly, I, I don't think I've ever pulled him. Actually, I pulled him out once in a box. That was it. Uh, you need Larquees for him and then two other Gladiator Beast monsters. And the same effect, shuffle them into the deck. During either player's turn, when a spell or trap is activated, you can discard a card. You get the activation and destroy it. If this card faced up on the field, act, uh, this card must be faced up on the field to activate its effect. And it's a 3,000 beater with 2,800 defense. That is a strong monster. Look at that. That attack, that, that attack he has here, 2800, is his defense. This is why this guy is in the deck, because if you need a giant beater to rival Blue Eyes, he's the perfect one if you have three glads on the field, which you probably won't. But, you know, it's always fun. You have to have Larkwees, which is kind of hard. Uh, that's why I'm still pulling from the packs. I'm still trying to get my second Larkwees, man. Um, so yeah, once you upgrade the deck, what I'd probably do is get rid of Alexander for another Larkwees. If you have three bestiaries, um, I would only recommend running two, because you only need two. Maybe get rid of a test date for it. And then if you want to run another impenetrable attack, mm, get rid of a gladius. That's really all you need, honestly. Keep on doll, because it's going to be those times where an 1800 is on the board. Nothing in your deck can be able to rival that 1800 without an equip. So, of course, you got on doll to rival it. It's pretty simple. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You guys saw the, the replays. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Please leave a like, comment, and will feel free to subscribe. If you guys like this deck, tell me in the comment section down below. I think it's pretty budget. Tell me if you guys think it's budget. Peace.